This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so again, I'm telling you, so the prerequisite for this course, you should also know the Salesforce development. Okay. And uh, now, again, let's uh, continue with what we discussed yesterday. Uh, so, is anyone don't know about how we use uh, VS Code? So, if anyone is there, if you don't know how to use VS Code, please let me know. All of you, you know about how we use VS Code? Yes. Yes, yes. Yep. Yes, you know. Okay. Yeah. So again, I'm not repeating. Right? So if you, if some of you, if you don't know how to use Visual Studio, so please let me know. Maybe I can provide a document and provide the instructions how you can install VS Code and how you can work with the Visual Studio Code. Okay. So going forward. We are going to use this Visual Studio Code to do the development. And um, yeah, maybe due to the component bundle structure, right? Each and every component will be having around eight files within the bundle. So when we do the development, I need to switch between those files, each bundle. Let's say if there are three components created when I am navigating from one component to other component. I think people are struggling. OK, so if you find some difficulty like that, please let me know. OK, and also uh, in general, I use it to start by taking the requirement and uh, explaining uh, directly by taking requirements. I think people are feeling more complex when I take like that. So this time, first one week, we're only going to understand basics, to understand each topic of the ARA. With very, very basic example, I'm going to teach. Maybe once we understand all the different concepts, then when, once we maybe take requirements and work for the complex project, maybe you might understand. OK, so now uh, let's continue with what we discussed yesterday. So again and again, maybe uh, one, one of the point. So our framework is app centric. OK, so we create multiple components and uh, embed all those components together into one application and the use. So such kind of framework and uh, it more relies on the client side logic. Most of the JavaScript logic, only when there is a need to interact with the server, for example, reading the data from database, doing the DML operation, making API callouts, only in those situations we try to call the Apex code. Otherwise, mostly we write the logic in the JavaScript controller. So since uh, JavaScript executes within the browser, the performance of the RI is better when compared to Visual Force. Okay, and also yesterday already we discussed we can only create from either developer console or VS Code. So today I'm going to, from today onwards, I'll use Visual Studio Code to do the development. So maybe when you register for developer edition account, we don't see any problem. But when you work for a sandbox, so make sure that in our sandbox, you created my domain. If it is not created, so talk to your team and intimate everyone. And um, so once it is fine to create the my domain, create the my domain. And uh, so you can proceed further. OK, so that's uh, one of the point we should know. And uh, as part of the lightning component development, Right, we call lightning or ARA, right? Both are same. Okay, so mainly we create ARA components and ARA applications. When we create ARA component, uh, eight files bundle will be generated. At high level, just I included yesterday. 
per application you see seven files okay so and also mostly right we prefer for the styles how the look and feel of the element which matches with the lightning experience to see those styles and to inspire from the um, components examples provided by salesforce we go to this lightning design system website and these are already some components developed by salesforce for few requirements we will make use of these components and uh, achieve the requirements okay so now uh, we started with creating a basic component we created one of the i'm also trying to uh, maybe if i create uh, after creating 20 components people are struggling so which component for which purpose a lot of confusion is arising so that's why this time so i'm just uh, taking some time to um, give the component name and the, as part of the component name what are the topics we are going to understand all those things i'll be typing like this so that next time when you refer you can follow this order and uh, you can go to this component and see the code and understand what we wrote to achieve these requirements in such a way for you it will be very easy i will be keep on adding the component name and uh, what are the topics discussed as part of the component name so that way you can follow this and uh, you can refer the code and uh, make sure to understand everything okay so yesterday so we started understanding about the global value providers so i created a project okay so through this package.xml our ara components whatever we create will be of the type ara definition bundle okay so right click and retrieve so that whatever directly yesterday we created all those components came into this project folder right so this is what that one okay so here this is the ui part and this is the controller logic right for now we have only two files in the component bundle the okay, one is the component which is the required file in the bundle this is optional but uh, since i want to show something with javascript we also added this one okay so now so let's uh, continue so these are the global value providers so dollar browser is one of the global value provider the advantage with this we get to know the component is rendered that means the component is opened from a desktop or mobile or tab all those things we'll get to know so full list you can also always refer documentation dollar browser in our component when you search like that you will see the full list of options available okay now here uh, all <laughs> So always uh, we have to give dollar browser dot. So whatever the available options we have by referring in the documentation, this is it will give either desktop or phone. It will return either true or false. Same thing. Sometimes there is a need to refer this from the JavaScript. Okay, for that what we are doing, uh, I have defined one of the javascript function so this is a function uh, the function name is to action is the function name but how we are calling so to call that we are adding one of the button right lightning button and the variant brand so actually this is one of the standard lightning component okay so if you go to component library in the component library this component is there this is developed by salesforce one of the standard lightning component so we are using that right in this component we are supplying the attribute values right variant brand means it will apply the 
uh, style to display the button in the blue color. Label, one of the attribute value we are supplying. On click is one of the attribute. So all these are attributes maintained within that uh, standard component internally. Okay. So for this, so here for us on click on this button. So to call the JavaScript function, always when there is a need to call the JavaScript function in the bundle, we say C dot the name of the function. So it will call and already I explained this CMP. The name does not matter. The order matters. Okay, so this name, if you want uh, COMP, CMP, or whatever the other name you want, you can give. It's not a problem, right? Um, and this is for event. Instead of event, if you want to use E, it will also work. Okay, this the order of parameters matters. Okay, so here we are so not using any of these things going forward we'll use okay so just in general when you define the function you see these things okay if you don't want helper it's fine it will work if you don't want event it will be fine if you don't want this it's fine right it's fine it will work but if you want we have to include in general as a standard people keep that okay so here to get the attribute value somehow we have to use this dollar a dot get and uh, supply this like this so that way from javascript we can access those global value provider values okay so now so today what i'm going to explain so in the same way we have dollar local so one of the global value provider so using this we get to know the current logged in user language and uh, maybe country and all other details okay 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 so for that so here maybe for local right in the same way so anything dynamically if you want to show we use this dynamic expression so dollar local dot okay so let's say i want the uh, language and i want the uh, maybe city so since i want to give the line break i'm just giving like this so let's say country so let's say currency of the current logged in user okay many more are there for that you have to just refer dollar local in R we'll see all the available options okay so now so just i added and already we know same thing how you can access in the javascript right so maybe here for local so while printing we should know so what we are printing yeah that's why here so maybe here language country currency say language local right, dollar a dot get local dot the language and it is case sensitive instead of small letter if you give capital letter it won't work okay so in the same way here also i'm giving and also it's up to you so you want to use this a single code for a string and uh, dynamically append using plus operator you have to use like this okay so there is one more right advanced javascript from es6 the javascript one of the uh, one of the uh, major upgrade of javascript is happened in es6 yeah later so there is a concept called uh, template text format so instead of people don't like to give plus plus and uh, concatenate all the dynamic things so for that we we'll use this like this back tick and this one and also the basics like this maybe all these things i explained as part of the javascript uh, pre-workshop 
uh, going forward, maybe by this weekend, I'll plan to share the JavaScript sessions um, so that when you watch those, whatever I'm explaining, all these kind of things will be covered as part of that. Okay. So maybe that way it will be easy for you to understand these kind of things. Okay. So this here I'm using tactic, which is under escape keyword. So when we use like this, so so what we can do the dynamic expressions no need to give plus okay so whatever the plain text will be given like this so whenever you find some dynamic expression inside this so we need to enclose this dollar within this we need to enclose so that way it will work okay already i think yesterday i explained again i'm trying to just repeat and country in the same way currency 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 so now let's save it and uh, see the preview uh, one of the easiest way to see the preview create the our application and uh, refer this component in that application and see the preview yeah, now while saving one of the common thing so people try to right click and deploy maybe you don't see some proper results if you do like this so we are modifying this file and also this file also right we are modifying both so we have to save both at a time okay so there are different ways how you do that one way is we have the folder for each component right so right click and deploy deploy source to R. so that way in all the files maybe it generate eight files if you modify all those things at a time if you want to save everything so you can right click on that entire component folder and deploy that's one of the easiest way otherwise use this package.xml so maybe remove everything and only keep this and refer your component name and deploy that is maybe needs more um, expertise right so for now just to uh, right click on the folder and the deploy that is the easiest way so now let's see how the preview is okay so i'm just closing and i'm trying to navigate to this right this is our component just keeping the focus here now let's go back uh, in our account continue so click on this gear icon and uh, click on developer console okay so now from here i'm going to see the preview so click on preview so if you see already you are seeing that the language is english right? country us currency dollar same thing in the log you will see right so when you click on this log is generated and the same thing you are also seeing right so now so maybe if you are mixing up like this i think uh, we are confusing okay so for that uh, what i'll do i'm just uh, going back to that component ui right i'm making a change in the component ui so maybe i'm just going to add one heading right so h1 and uh, Let's say this is for dollar browser, right? And maybe to highlight this, right? To apply the style, there are different ways how we apply the styles. You know, one of the way inline styling, right? Inline styling means we use style attribute directly apply the style. The other way is in the bundle we have the CSS file, 
there we include the styles and the ref okay that other way going forward i'll explain for now i want to quickly add the style here so background color so let's say i'm giving hello and maybe here also maybe so just uh, this will automatically add the break so now maybe here this is for dollar local okay, that is just to apply some background styles and all those things okay so just quickly i'm right clicking on that component and the deploy okay so if you see some confusion with what i click and uh, navigate just let me know Okay, so just uh, refresh. Okay, so now maybe somehow we have the separation and we are seeing like this. And okay, now I think it is fine. Um, so now um, maybe for this also to have the separation for this button. So I'll say actions. So I'm just keeping like that. So now uh, the other thing what I want to explain again yeah I'm going back to this node center you see here slowly we are understanding all this um, resource the static resource right how we refer the static resource that is one of the common thing when we develop the our component our application if there is a need to show the logo on top of the screen or something so where we keep that image we need to keep in the static resource and uh, from there we need to refer so i'll show you how we do that okay so now to add that okay so first of all we should have a static resource now i'm adding one more heading dollar resource using this we access the static resource so first we should have one static resource uploaded then we can refer here, right? So for that, go to Salesforce. Uh, so now here, go to static resources. Click on static resources. And uh, click on new static resource. Okay, so now I'm making it as public. So in general, if you are using our component within the Salesforce organization, you don't see any impact. It is private or public, but there is a concept called site.com. We also show some pages to public. Okay, that time it should be at uh, public. So for example, one of the example of the public page you see right you access the class account i'm saying you need to enter here here you are seeing some logo and all these things i have uploaded this as public if i uploaded this one as private you don't see in this public site okay which will be accessible by anyone with the URL, right so maybe i'm choosing public simply giving the name of the resource as logo and choose the file I'm going to choose one of the logo file. Okay, logo. So I'm choosing this logo. Click on save. Okay, now to refer this static resource. So all we do, right? Dollar resource dot name of the static resource so that's it right so that will show the static resource okay let's maybe this one same thing how we refer in the here how we refer so maybe I copy this logo url Right, it will generate URL here. Right, it cannot show because it is JavaScript. It can get the URL. Um, so here, I'll say dollar 
resource dot name of the resource is logo and this will give the resource url right so now let's deploy right i'm right clicking on the entire folder make sure to right click on the entire folder and deploy. okay now once it updates i think it is deployed successfully right so now go back go to that uh, application where we are seeing the preview just to refresh okay so now if you see here you are seeing the url right even when you click on this right logo url is undefined something maybe i made some i might be made some mistake let me check that um so now dollar resource dot logo is it case sensitive or no yeah yeah it is case sensitive okay i think logo did you create it with capital L? yeah yeah so i think logo i gave as a capital L, right so that's the problem so that's why it gave issue okay so now let me go back now i just don't want to see the url right i want to see this image on the ui to show the image img this is the javascript i mean sorry html so this is the html tag so img src we have to give the url of the image that way this will take care of showing that image okay now again right click and deploy so just to refresh and if you see the image it is showing right and also when you click on this you see that url also it is there so all we do copy this url if you want to see right after the primary url paste and try to see you'll see that right so it's like that so now what if if the images are in the compressor folder in a zip folder if the images are in the zip folder how we can access so that i am going to show you so for that again go to salesforce go to static resources we are going to upload one of the compressor file okay static resources so click on new okay so i'm taking this public so browse for the file so i think uh, already i have one of the compressor file i think this time i'm looking for the document let me maybe go here so so i think i created a project and so here this is one of the zip file let's say i want to upload this right you can also maybe drag and drop to directly on that i have that or you can maybe browse for that so so actually in this how the files are there so this is the folder in that again one more folder is there and here the images are there okay so i'll show you how we can access that 
then I'm giving project. This is the name of the static resource. So when I refer this, this entire compressed folder, the zip file will be uh, generated, right? If I say like this, dollar resource dot this one, the entire the URL of the zip file, it will download the zip file. It will give that URL. But what I want in this, we have a folder images, and uh, in that we have these two files I want to refer. Okay, so to refer, how we do? So this is the static resource. It's the location of that resource. In that resource, we have to give the folder path. Okay, so where exactly the image is located? Okay, including the primary folder. Right? This entire folder I added to zip. So this folder name I need to give in that again images folder. In that this is there. I need to give the entire folder location. Okay. So project and again it is case sensitive. Okay. Uh, project and uh, inside that I have images, everything in small. Clash the file name SFTC ninety six. Okay, so ninety six. So this gives the URL, right? In the same way, we have one more file ninety seven. This also gives the uh, URL. So same thing. So if you want to refer. Here, how we need to do. So here, dollar resource dot and project is the resource name, and uh, I just need to do slash, right? Because I'm using template kind of syntax. Just to give this. This is the URL of the first image. This is the URL of the second image. Okay, so maybe let's maybe save it. And also maybe for now we are only showing the URL, right? I'll also show as image, uh, but uh, there is one standard component. Okay, I am going to make use of that. So before we do that, so far whatever we did just to deploy the entire component and if you go back and see so if you see the urls you are seeing here okay i think uh, the two urls because we did not give the break both urls are generated and this is a url so here let's see Really, in that location, that image is there. Okay, so we have seen like this. Anyway, here maybe we see like this, but so when you access directly from here, I think uh, when we access, I think uh, you can see that. Okay, um, so let me. Go here, click on this button here also, and it is generating like this. Okay, so, but when you preview, I think it will work. Let's, let's, let me show that image. Okay, so go back. Here, image. I'm adding that and see how it is displaying. Okay. 
deploy. Okay, so now just a refresh. Okay, so those are not displayed. I think something is wrong here. Um, so let me go back. This is a URL. So we take the project again. No, sorry, you have done it twice. Yeah, so one is for project uh, a static resource name. So basically, so if you see here, this is the one of the static resource name, and the one is for this folder structure. Okay. We let me open this whatever. project and the images okay so i need to also add a png right the file format uh, missing okay so otherwise you don't know what is that file to show the file format is missing here okay so now i think with this uh, it will this is the fully URL of that Okay, so maybe so deploy meanwhile deploy so meanwhile already whatever url we have here let's copy after this if you give dot png file format is opening right so file format is also important now just now refresh Maybe you are also seeing those images, but those are very big and uh, it's like that. Now what I'll do, so when you go to the component library, this is the component library. Okay, so here we have one of the component called Carousel. Okay, this is one of the component so i'm going to use this okay so for this right this is already developed by salesforce all we need to know how we can use this component that's what okay, so here lightning colon carousel this is a tag name and also for each and every image we need to give like this okay, this is a reference for us and okay, just to copy this And uh, go back to the UI here and paste. Now, in this, this is the location in the SRC we need to view. Right? Maybe this, cut this, and uh, here we give. In the same way, here. We give so, and, uh, maybe I'm just removing the other things. Uh, maybe first cut or whatever the name you want to give heading when you click on that, where it should go. So, all those things you can change it, but I'm just keeping as this for now. And now, so let's see how it looks. Okay, so now. Just uh, right click and it apply. We are using one of the Salesforce standard component. So we do that based on some requirement. If there is a standard component, we can consider using those. Now just a refresh. Okay, so now just showing, but the image is very big and I want to decrease that, right? Now we need to apply some styles. Okay, uh, so for that, uh, 
here in this bundle, right? So here already bundle is created in the developer console. There we did not generate the CSS file, right? So what we need to do, again, if you want, uh, we have to manually create that file here. Otherwise, create in the developer console and uh, refresh, okay? So here I want to create. Anyway, as soon as we maintain the same name, it will work. Okay, so here, right click on that, creating a new file, dot CSS, with that extension, should have a CSS file. And the main thing in Nara, so the base class is this. So always we need to give this, and uh, so inside that we can apply the styles. Okay, so it's like that. Okay, so here, so all I want, uh, wherever the image is there, and wherever the image tag is there. So I want to decide the maximum size. Okay. So maximum, maximum width. Okay, so maybe I'm giving So let's say 360 pixel. Then that is the maximum width I'm giving. And also, right, this this will be applied to all the image tags, wherever images tags are there. For those image tags, it will apply. Okay, and also to avoid stretching the image. So there is one CSS style called object fit, right? So content, okay, that is the style. Maybe if you don't know, maybe even I also don't know. So when we want something like that, we do some research and understand. So what are the CSS styles are there and add it, okay? So now I'm giving this. Now due to this, wherever the image is there. Anyway, this is like for image internally. Okay, so for that, this will be applied and we see only with this, with the image, okay? So now, just right click, deploy. So it's deployed, go back and just refresh. Now it is here, we are seeing only that much okay maybe if you want more we can also uh, maybe increase the size okay so but uh, also this this whatever the widget we are adding here this is occupying the full width of the screen right so we can also control the uh, width i mean this element is occupying entire width Let's say I want to uh, occupy this element only at the half of the screen. So when you have those kind of things, again, so either we need to see lightning design system on the website. Here we have a grid system, okay? So we need to go to utilities and the grid, okay? So how the grid we can divide using grid we can divide the screen into multiple parts and decide how much part of the screen should be occupied and all those things you can see here okay so nowadays this is also provided as part of the standard component library okay so this we have to work more and uh, copy the styles and all those things very easy way in the component library okay so here we have a layout item okay we have layout using this we can control the same thing okay so here how we control right so how we deal with the alignment right? so all those things you can see here, 
right? different options we have we can make use of this right okay so here let's say so i'm going to use this and divide the screen maybe i want to show that only half of the screen right so what i do copy this layout so go here so this widget i'm keeping inside this lightning layout Okay, I'm adding here and this aligning. So now um, in the layout, we use layout items, right? So lightning, layout, item. Otherwise, you can just copy, copy this. inside that and keeping that now i want this to occupy only if you divide the screen into 12 parts right so i want that to occupy only six parts okay this this by default uh, it maintains a screen with 12 parts out of that i want size of six so that way it will only occupy uh, half of the screen, left to right half of the screen only it will occupy. So how I know it is having size and all those things. So when you open this standard component in the specification, so we'll also see what is the size. Right? It divides the viewport into 12 parts. Right? So by using that, okay, going forward, we use all these things frequently. Okay, for now. Uh, all I do just uh, right click on this and deploy and see the result. Deploy. Deploy. Just to refresh. Okay, now if you see right, this entire widget is occupying only this much. Okay. And also, if you want to increase the height. Uh, 180, if you add 180, 4. Let's say I want to increase one more 480, 1. It will also increase. Anyway, those things you can work out. Just uh, so that is about that. Okay. So now let's focus on the other. Again, I'm opening the nodes and here the label. One of the common thing is how to refer the custom label, right? That is one of the common thing when we deal with the um, project. And day to day, we read the messages from the custom label. So maybe what I'll do, this entire, so whatever the entire logic is there, I'm going to keep this, in a card okay so card is also one of the thing one of the component we refer regularly again go to component library so card scroll down sorry scroll up card if you see there are different styles of the cards so which style you want how you want okay, you can do here so if you see, this is a cup, right? So now I'm copying, copying this card. And also what our CSS they use, maybe I don't want that, only this card part I'm copying. And I'm pasting here in the card, right? Um, this logo, whatever here you are seeing this, this icon is from this, okay, and this is the title. Maybe I don't want icon, and I don't want the title, the title they are reading from attribute, 
okay now i don't want attribute and this is photo right r as a attribute photo and body okay maybe i don't want this photo so now your voice is coming low uh, okay is it fine now no it's very low uh, is for everyone it is same is my voice is low uh, it's sometimes low and most of the time it's breaking yes okay okay um let me check my okay so maybe is it fine now now yeah, it's okay much better okay yeah please let me know something if it is breaking like that okay i believe it is fine now right yeah sure yep it's better now okay okay so now um so here what we are doing here yeah this just i'm trying to explain this i don't want this footer part these things i am also removing that okay so in this place we keep the body so entire our so far whatever we wrote that i am keeping in this place okay and uh, here title maybe so i'll give title as um, Welcome to our demo, like this. Okay. So for now, let's save it, and I'll create a custom label and I'll show you how we can pull this value from there. Okay, right click and uh, deploy. It is deployed. I'll go back and go here. Just to see the, how it is looking. Right. So now, so I'm seeing like this. Welcome to our demo. But this message I want to pull from the custom label so that in production, if they ask to change the name, already. So since we pull from the custom label, they can configure without code change. Go to custom labels. Click on custom labels. Yeah. So let's say the custom label name I'm giving as welcome. Okay. So here, message maybe. Okay, so like this I'm giving, right? Save. And I'm going to refer from here. To refer that, all we need to do, so remove this. We have a global value provider, dollar label. And we have to give the namespace, okay? So in general, when you work for a service-based company, you don't see any namespace created. So default namespace C. So when you work for a app exchange application, when we create the manager packages, in those situations in organization, we create namespace. So if you want to see that left side, search for packages. And when you try to create the new package, you will see namespace option. So I'm just referring as C. If some namespace is created, we have to give that and the custom label name. Now that way, so this right will be referred from the label. Okay, so let's deploy. It is deployed. Let's go back and uh, just uh, refresh. Okay, so now you are seeing this message, right? Now, if you want to change that, 
no need to make any code change. Save. Just to refresh. But it is changing, right? So it's like that. So on day to day, when you when we work, we refer the custom labels. So just uh, I explain about that. Okay. So so these are the some of the basics we understood as part of this component. To understand a few more, right? We have a concept called ID, right? local ID, global ID. So especially when we deal with the ARA components, when you deal with the standard ARA components, maybe when you deal with the HTML, HTML tags, we can give ID one of the attribute. But the lightning, standard lightning components, whatever we use, for example, so maybe this lightning card, Right? That is one of the standard lightning component. Um, so maybe lightning button. That is one of the standard lightning component. So all these things. So if you go to this lightning button and see, maybe the ID attribute might not be supported. Right? If it is HTML tag, by default we give ID. But this lightning button. So go and see. Okay. So it might. It won't support. ID attribute. If you see, you are not seeing ID attribute. But if you want to give some unique name and if you want to recognize that, what we do. So for that, uh, there is a concept called the component IDs. So basically, local ID means which we give as a developer. Global ID means system generate one unique ID for each component what we refer. So because we can also refer one component multiple times, right? So this global ID will be useful to recognize different instances of a component. Uh, so mainly we deal with the local ID. We give as a developer, right? How we give? Uh, to give that, simply we use ARA ID, right? Maybe this one, we cannot give ID, right? But we can give our ID and uh, right? some ID, whatever you feel. This is support. Yeah, that those kind of things, how we really deal, how we recognize those elements, and also as part of this example, uh, we find about uh, we understand about ARA find. So one of the feature. Fine. We say R of fine, but while referring, we just uh, whatever the in the controller, this component is there, right? Dot fine, and we'll try to recognize the elements based on the R ID. Okay, those kind of things I'll explain as part of the component. So I'm going to create a component with the name this and I explain. Since we don't have time, so we'll discuss about that tomorrow. Okay, so continue with all other many examples. So before ending today, any questions, anyone? So all of you yes, actually yeah. notes and recording. Yeah. Yeah, actually, in in this VS Code, how will create we how we how can we create a project for our can you please tell me something? So, Yesterday I missed that. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is, do you know how to do development with VS Code? Yes, yes, I know. So, however, for Aura, I can how 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 can I create a file for Aura? Yeah. So, in general, you know how to create the class, right? Press F1, right? You create a yes, class right? in the same way. Same way. All you need to do is search for ARA component mm -hmm. and create ARA component. Okay. So now give the name of the component. Component 
IDs. That's the component I want. And enter, do the default path. So that's it, we created it. So this is our component created. Now if you see the, so when you create like this, system generate all the files in the bundle. You see all these okay. files are. Fine. Okay, fine, got it. Yeah. Any other questions, anyone? Okay, so and again, so some of you, I think, uh, so what is happening? They are saying they did not understand anything. They are thinking that it is admin and the, the starting of the course. If someone, some of you, if you are thinking like that, it is not that course, right? So the expectation is already you should know administration and the basics of development, at least Apex, you should know, okay? Uh, okay, uh, one more question, Mr. Renu. Uh, why helper you used in our bundle? What is the use of helper? Yeah, we have the upcoming, right? I'm going to explain all those things. We are not yet done, right? So each and every resource, and how we use, I'm going to explain, okay? So for your question, the common point is, the logic in the helper can be reused when we inherit the components. Okay, so when we have the components, there are two things how we reuse the components, right? So people say component composition and uh, also inheritance. If you see, this is the topic. The composition yeah. is including one component inside other component and uh, using the information of that component. Okay, but if you don't want to include a component inside other component so what we can also do we inherit we have extends and implements using that we inherit so especially when you inherit the logic present in the helper right so that can be reused and we can enhance that helper function logic that's the purpose of the helper okay oh, we have examples when we start the topic I'll explain. Okay. Take it. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Any other questions before ending? Okay. So with the today, right, we are done with the demo. Okay. So from tomorrow, meeting link will be changed. Okay. So if you are interested, so you have to pay the fee and continue. Okay. So thank you. We'll continue tomorrow. Tomorrow will be same time, no? Yeah, same time, but uh once uh, someone pays the fee, they'll get the meeting. Okay. Sorry, okay. say again. Yeah, yeah. So with the today, demo sessions are completed. Right? First to two days are for demo. From tomorrow, if you want to join, right? If someone want to join, you have to pay the fee so that we'll get the meeting link and we can join and continue. Okay, okay, okay. fine. Yeah. Thank you.